Welcome back. This is a little bit of a short, sharp episode today, but I just want to talk about something that I see so often, including my own experience in my first High Rocks events. And it's basically something we call the danger zone. So once you go off that start line, it can be really easy to get wrapped up in the competition. It can be easy to get all that adrenaline pumping, um, you know, and from there, when we head off that start line, we can really lose our race strategy. We can lose our race pace. We can kind of almost like lose our mind in that moment. And the first 10 to 15 minutes of that race are crucial. Okay, and I'm gonna explain a little bit why that part of the race is really crucial. And it's because it's what I call the danger zone or the red zone. I think sometimes as High Rocks athletes, um, we can forget that this is an event that lasts an hour, right? This is an event that lasts 70 minutes, 80 minutes for some people, 90 minutes for some people. So pushing too hard in the first 15 minutes is gonna be so detrimental to the tail end of your performance. Okay, because I'm gonna explain exactly why, okay? Let's talk about this. This is your competition time along here. And then this is your exertion here, okay? So your lactic threshold is gonna be somewhere sitting at the top of that. So we don't wanna be in zone two and pushing into like our 90% maximal heart rate too fast in that competition. If we go off the start blocks and we're running a super, super quick lap, then we're hitting the ski erg and trying to stay with everyone else. Then we're going into another run Let's say for an average person, that's four, uh, sorry, 12, 15 minutes, okay? 12, 15 minutes is your danger zone, all right? Because guess what comes at the end of that? Guess what comes after the first run, ski, run? We then have the most lactic part of that event. It's your maximal strength part, okay? The sleds are gonna wound up somewhere here in this first third of the race, okay? Now, if we have absolutely rocketed in this first five, 10, 12 minutes, and we're then at threshold, okay, we cannot remove lactate with no oxygen, okay? So if we've turned our body anaerobic, it basically means it's using glycogen and our oxygen is gonna be all over the place, okay? So we then hit the sleds, we don't have any oxygen to actually remove the lactate that we're about to build on the sled work. This is why you see people's pace just go boom, 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 straight after the sleds, okay? Because they can't aerobically and lactically, if that's even a word, but they can't recover from that overload, okay? So my advice as a high rocks coach and from working with a lot of high rocks athletes all the way through to world championship, top level of the sport, is to build into the event, okay? Have the endurance, work on the endurance so that you have more in the last third of the race than any other of your competitors, because guess what? I'm gonna tell you right now, 60% of the people that are gonna run off in your wave are gonna do exactly what I just spoke about, okay? So try to relax yourself into the event. There are for, they're far and few between, but there are a few elite athletes who might say, okay, well, it's part of my race strategy to get out in front, and that's absolutely fine. They're probably well advanced experienced and that's been part of their strategy they've been working on but if you're in your first few events etc and you go out what i call red line too soon then you come across the sledge like you've got to remember that the first 10 minutes of that event for even the first five minutes your body's kind of deciding okay is this aerobic event or is this anaerobic right and the sleds are some of the most anaerobic movements you can possibly hit so we don't want to be confusing the body into thinking that it's a, it's an anaerobic event because it's gonna change energy system, okay? So, you know, the majority of high rocks is aerobic. You've got your row in there, you've got your ski, you've got your running. Like most of that is gonna be aerobic. So we don't wanna trick our body in this first phase of the race into thinking that you are going anaerobic, okay? And then there is not gonna be much coming back from that amount of lactate because you're gonna send yourself into a bit of an oxygen debt and you need oxygen to remove the lactate. So guess what? If you even do, you might not actually start to recover until 50, 60 minutes into the event, which by then you're having to then go and find another 100 wall balls and 26,000 lunges. <laughs> okay, so that's my top tips. Just a bit about the start of the race. Okay, this is all about lactic threshold and not redlining in your Hyrox events. That's me out, over and done. Take care, peace.